So a great deal of what is going to help you be accurate at long range is not just your understanding of ballistics and all the mystery that happens to your bullet as it flies hundreds of yards, but getting your sights properly aligned and zeroed and tracking vertically before you go to long range, you need to do some short range work. And this next segment in the field is going to demonstrate the tall target test and things that you have to do at short range to prepare for accuracy at long range. The tall target test is, as the name implies, you use a tall target with aim points at the bottom, and this is where you get your basic rifle zero at 100 yards or 100 meters. And once you have a good zero, you dial your scope turret up 20, 30 minutes of angle, it doesn't really matter, just so you know exactly what you dialed, and you shoot another group uh, up this plumb line. Now, you're checking several things when you do this. You're checking that a, your scope travels up the plumb line. Uh, you have to use a level on your scope to make sure that, uh, that you're not canting the rifle one side or the other. This is imperative in order to have a long range wind zero. If you don't have a level on your scope and you're tilting one way or the other and you dial up, imagine if your crosshair wasn't aligned with this vertical line. It would come up the side like this and you would shoot a group over here. Now, at short range, it's really obvious that you're off to the side of the plumb line, but at long range, if you hit two minutes to the left of your aim point at a thousand yards, you might just think there's some wind that you don't see or that your wind zero is off. But by shooting it at a hundred yards at short range, you can really uh, put your sight under the microscope and see exactly where it's moving your point of impact. So that's one thing that you do is make sure that your vertical travel is straight up the plumb line whenever your level indicates level on the rifle. The other thing that you're ensuring is that whenever you dial a certain amount of elevation, like 30 minutes of angle, for example, that your point of impact actually shifts the correct amount. And if it doesn't, that's okay as long as you correct for it. And we'll get into how, how to do those calculations and deal with the uh, correction factors to apply to your scope later. You wanna use a level to make sure that your lines are purely vertical. They have to be straight up and down. Uh, this is what ensures that your, your scope crosshairs and your turret and your reticle, everything is tracking in alignment with gravity. Um, that's, uh, that's the entire point of this test is to make sure that, you're, that everything tracks perfectly vertical. So using a carpenter's level, we make sure that we're level. We staple it top and bottom. And make sure that it's, it didn't shift on us. All right, it's still level. This particular setup illustrates uh, the importance of using an actual carpenter's level and, and how so many people can end up being so far off with their level uh, when they're setting up the rifle and scopes. Notice how the target frame itself, when it's setting in its fixture on the range, looks crooked in comparison to the tall target that we mounted on there with the level. Um, now, if you were to go and put up a target on that frame without a level and then go back and try to level your sights just based on eyeballing it, naturally you would line up with whatever vertical and horizontal lines there are on that target frame, which is visibly canted from true vertical. You know, you have to use the carpenter's level or a plumb line or something that will line up with gravity. Don't make any assumptions about how square a target frame is or how vertical any lines are uh, without actually measuring it because it's gonna bite you in the end. When you shoot long range, your wind of zero won't be on and you won't know why. Okay, we're gonna start out verifying our 100 yard point of impact. Okay, there's a three shot group at 100 yards. It's uh, it's right on for elevation. That last shot is a little bit to the right, but uh, still a decent group. I'm gonna dial up now, 30 minutes of angle. Okay, we went straight up 30 minutes of angle and I'm gonna shoot another group. Uh, this group should be right on that plumb line, 30 minutes above the first group. Okay, there's three shots at 30 minutes of angle up. Next, we're gonna measure the distance to the target, measure how much the point of impact moved, and do the math to see if the scope is tracking true. So the range finder indicates 93 and a half yards. I've got another range finder here. We're gonna check uh, just to make sure. 
uh, when you're doing calibration things, you always need to check and double check your instrumentation. Okay, this, this unit says 94 yards, so they seem to be agreeing, 93 and a half, 94 yards. We've got another range finder here. This is the most expensive of all. Let's see what this one said. They ought to agree with the other two. Ninety-one yards. So we've got a three-yard difference among three different rangefinders. Now, do you trust the most expensive one, or do you trust the two that agree that are less expensive? It's these kind of things that are important details whenever you're doing short-range work in preparation for long-range work. You're doing a calibration exercise here, and we've got more than two percent error in our ability to measure range. That would track directly to a 2% error in how we understand our turret is moving. And it's worth taking the time at short range to understand these things so that we get everything right. So since our laser rangefinders don't agree, we're going to have to go old school and measure the distance of the target with a tape measure that is probably the most reliable of all three of these, at least in the 100 yard range. So we measured the range to the target with the tape measure and it, it tapes out to 278 feet, which is just under 93 yards. So that's the distance that we're going to use in calculating the actual uh, tracking of the scope. And we're going to next measure the separation and point of impact on the target when we crank the 30 minutes of elevation and see how that compares to what it actually should have moved and if we need to apply any correction factors. Let's measure this out point of impact shift of 29 inches, 29 inch point of impact shift. So the calculation for determining your expected point of impact shift at a certain range is the range 92.66 times your dialed elevation that's 30 times a constant. Uh, in the case of using yards and minutes of angle, the constant is 0.01047. So applying that formula, you'll arrive at an expected point of impact shift of 29.1 inches. Now we had an expected point of impact shift of 29.1, and we had an actual point of impact shift of 29 inches on, on this target at this distance. So the actual correction factor is the expected point of impact shift divided by the actual, which is 29.1 divided by 29 even, the correction factor is 1.003. So that actually is, that means that there's 0.3% error in the scope tracking according to this tall target calibration exercise. I usually don't worry about applying a correction factor unless it's over 1% because there's just that much error in, you know, shooting a group. You shoot it, you do this experiment again, and the group might be a little bit higher or lower, but if it's a, within a percent, I call that scope good and apply no correction factor. In other words, it's tracking exactly as it should. That's an attribute that you need to have in your long range scope to know that when you dial a certain amount of elevation, you actually get that amount. And that's the, the intent of this tall target test. This is the extension of zeroing your rifle for long range. You need, you have your short range zero, but you need to also make sure you'll have a long range zero whenever you dial the correct elevation on. And you need to be sure that your windage zero is gonna be good as well, that you're not off one side or the other on the vertical adjustment. So this is a, an example of how to do the tall target test, how to apply the math and come up with a correction factor if necessary, or to just verify that your scope's tracking properly. Because this tall target test is so important, we're gonna go through the process again to sort of get you familiar with how it works, what the steps are, how to do the math, um, it's a simple principle in theory to understand how everything should work, but when it actually comes down to doing the numbers, I want to just go through that again so that everybody's comfortable with the formula and confident that you can apply this to your own scope to make sure that you can get your shots on target at long range yourself. So this is a, a different setup. This is a competition rifle, a 243 Winchester, uh, loop hold straight, 25 power uh, competition scope. So we're going to... Uh, go on target again, 
at 100 yards, confirm our zero, and then uh, go up 30 minutes of angle and see where the point of impact actually shifts to. Okay, we've got a three shot group to confirm 100 yard zero, but right away you can see visually the difference in these two scopes. Both of them dialed 30 minutes of angle. This one we got one amount of adjustment that we verified to be correct, and this one is, is not the same amount. So this, the test has already proven out to be useful in terms of bringing to our attention that this scope is not tracking uh, as, as well as the first one was. So uh, we noticed that the group is a little bit to the right of the zero here, and up here it's a little bit to the left. That indicates that we're not tracking exactly perfectly vertically up the line as we were in this case. That's just a matter of reinstalling, uh, adjusting the level a little bit. You know, you, making sure that the crosshair is straight on this line whenever the level indicates level and that that's how you shoot. But this is a very minor adjustment. We would just loosen the level on the scope, rotate it around, tighten it down again until we could shoot a point of impact here and then have it be the same up here. I mean, otherwise what we're looking at, if we uh, zero the scope at 100 yards, it's about a click or two to the left. Um, that's going to put us even further off to the left up here. So that's, it's illustrating two problems with this setup as it is now. One of them is the amount of vertical tracking. The other one is a plumb line problem or a vertical problem. So let's get a measurement on this and see what the actual point of impact shift was. Okay, 28 inches. So let's do the math. We had uh, 92.66 yards was the range times a 30 minute of angle adjustment times the unit constant of 0 0.01047. We have an expected 29.1 inches of movement, uh, which is the same expected amount as we had with the 308 previously that reasons it's the same distance, the same target, we dial the same amount. 29.1 inches is what we should get at 92.66 yards. We actually got 28 inches. So 29.1 divided by 28, the actual shift is 1.039. That means the correction factor is 3.9% or close to 4%. Uh, there's, so there's 4% error in the amount of travel you get out of this scope whenever you dial uh, 30 minutes of elevation. To highlight again the importance of this tall target calibration test, without doing these kinds of things, it makes the, the job of long range shooting a lot more difficult. You know, you'll find that your windage is off at long range and you won't know why. It makes it difficult to learn how to read the wind and correlate what you see in the wind indicators to where your shots actually hit if your scope isn't tracking truly vertical. And also, furthermore, if the amount that your scope moves in reaction to dialing an amount on the turret or holding in the reticle is not the exact amount that you think it is, in other words, if you take that knob for granted that you dial 30 and you're getting 30 and you don't actually get that, you're, I mean, that's an inch at 100 yards error, but at 1,000 yards, that's 10 inches error. You could easily shift your point of impact off of the target with this error if you don't do this test and verify uh, what your scope tracking is. But now that we've done this test, we can, do, we can make two corrections. We can adjust the level on the scope so that our point of impact truly does track straight up the plumb line. And the second thing we can do is apply a 4% correction factor. In other words, whatever we calculate we need in minutes of angle for a long range fire solution, we add 4% to that. And that would bring our point of impact up to where it should be for a true 30 minute of angle change. So this is the, the illustrating the value of the tall target test, how a good scope, the night force scopes have always tracked true for me. I've never, never had a case where a night force scope needed more than 1% uh, correction factor applied to it. And as far as vertical tracking, that's a matter of installing the level. Any scope can track truly vertical if it, if it has a properly installed level that you pay careful attention to while you're shooting. The second example showed where you could have some errors. It showed both the vertical tracking error and the magnitude of vertical adjustment error. So by doing this type of work at short range, it really tightens up your system. It helps you understand your sight better. Your sight is the critical link between what the actual fire control solution is and what you're truly applying to your rifle. 
you can't take that bridge for granted. You can't take for granted that it's doing what you think it is unless you actually verify it at short range on a tall target.